Okay, next we're going to check out automation or envelopes in Reaper. Now to automate anything in Reaper, we're going to use envelopes. And we can get to them by going over here. And click this button. That opens up this dialog. This is where you set up your envelopes. There's a bunch of options. We have volume, pan, width, volume, pan, and width, pre-effects, and then mute. We could also automate our sends. If we make a new track here, send this to this track, the send show up here. Send volume, send pan, and send mute. Now also, we can automate our effects. If we go over here, we see that there's an EQ on this track. We can automate all the parameters on this using envelopes. And they show up over here. Re-EQ, and here's all the parameters that we can automate. Let's hide this for now, and let's focus on the main ones. Let's delete this, which are volume, pan, and mute. So let's create one for this track. We'll make a volume one here, and the envelope shows up right down here. Now something I should explain about automation in Reaper is that the default mode, the default automation mode, is trim read. So if we turn this back off and check the volume right here, we'll see that it's set to minus 10 dB. We can see it over here as well, minus 10 dB. But if we add a volume envelope, it moves that setting down to the envelope. Right down here, now the envelope is minus 10, and the fader resets to zero. And then it's trimming our envelope. So that's why it goes back to zero. So again, if we turn this off, our level is minus 10. If we add it, it puts that level on the envelope, resetting the fader back to zero. So basically look at it like another level of volume control. First we have the envelope right down here, then we have a fader in trim mode that comes after it. Now let's record some automation. Now to do that, we have to change our automation mode. Again, it's in trim read. Let's change it to write. And it changes over here. Change the color and over here as well. So now to write some automation on this track. We could do it from here, we could do it from here, or we could do it from a controller, which is what I'm using. So let's hit play in write mode and record some automation. So I recorded that as an envelope right here. Now if we play it back, let's see what happens. It records on top of it because we're still in write mode. What we want to do is switch our mode back. Switch it back to trim read. And now we're going to hear it back hearing the volume envelope. Now, if you notice, the faders aren't moving because we're in trim mode, allowing us to trim what we're hearing down here. Now, if we want to see the automation, just switch it to read mode. Now it turns green and we'll see it play back over here and over here. It sounds the same, but now we can see what happened. Now let's record some pan automation. We'll go over here, select that. Let's make this a bit smaller. Now right down here, we have an envelope lane for pan automation. We'll switch this to write mode, and now we can write pan automation either from here or up here, or even down over here. Let's do it from here. Now you can see down here, it recorded some pan automation. It recorded a pan envelope, but it also rewrote up here. Undo it, and this is what it looked like before. So we want to record pan automation 
without erasing our volume automation. So to do that, go back to our dialog and turn off arming. For the volume, if we turn this off, now we can just record pan automation. And it's not going to rewrite this one, our volume. So now let's record the pan. Now it left the volume alone while we recorded the pan. And to hear this back, go back to our dialog, switch it back to read mode, and now we can hear it back. So now it pans and adjusts the volume at the same time. And we can also on the envelopes right over here. So the same thing is doing it over here. They're both on right now. We could turn them off right here and just choose the envelopes we want to record. We could also switch our modes by right clicking over here and switch the modes over here. Go back to write and we're ready to write some more automation. Go back to read or trim and it'll play it back. Now let's record some mute automation. And again, instead of doing it from here, Let's just right click and choose mute. That adds a mute envelope right down here. Let's make these smaller and this one bigger. And now we can record some mute automation right over here. Switch it to right, disarm these two so we don't erase them, and we're ready to write. Now I want to show you another preference. If we go to our preferences, and you go down to automation, there's an option over here. After recording automation in write mode, we can switch it to another mode. So we don't have to do it manually. Let's change this to trim read mode. And now after we record this pass, it's gonna to switch to that mode automatically. So let's mute a couple of notes over here. We can do it from here, we can do it from here. And now it's switched to trim mode. Let's hear it back. Now we muted just these two notes, which we can edit by dragging them around. This is unmuted and this is muted. And we're hearing them all back during playback. Now we could also bypass any of these parameters. So if we didn't want to hear the mute automation, but we still wanted to hear pan and volume, just hit this button right here, and it bypasses that envelope. Now it's not going to mute the guitar. Unbypass it, and it does. So any of these can be adjusted individually. And we could also choose if they're visible. If we go back to this dialog, we can hide our volume, our pan, and the mute. Those envelopes are still gonna play back. We just don't see them. And we could show them again from here. Make them visible and arm them from here as well. We can also change the visibility by right clicking over here. Volume, pan, and mute, or by going down here, which will show the active track envelopes. And they show back up. Or hide them over here. And they're all gone. Now we could also delete them. Let's show them again. To delete them, we can do it from here. Clear envelope, do the same thing for our pan, and now our pan automation is deleted. Now we could also edit our envelopes. Let's make this bigger, let's zoom in. All these little points here can be edited. We can create new ones by holding down shift and clicking, and we can move it. Let's clear the envelope and start over. 
we can create four points like this and grab right here between two points and they move together, which is great for working on a section like this note right here. Make four points and change the volume of just this one note. Let's hear that. Make it louder or lower. We could delete points by holding an Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and just delete them. We could draw points by holding that Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and we could just draw. We could select points by making a time selection, right clicking, and select points in our time selection. Then we can move just the selected ones like this. We can copy and paste points. Let's say we know that this right here is a good volume. Just copy it, paste it over here. Now we have a new volume right there. And we can adjust it by right clicking. Set the value. Let's make it minus 2 dB. And it changes to that. Let's go over here, create two more points, change the value of this one to minus 5 dB. And then it changes to minus 5 dB for that area. So you can go through the whole song, changing it up. Minus 1. And it's minus 1 right there. We could also constrain movement up and down or side to side. Let's say we wanted to change the time of this point, but we don't want to move it around and change the level. On the PC, hold down Control and Shift. On the Mac, hold down Command and Shift, and just grab it and shift it to the right or the left. And it constrains our movement to that one axis, in this case, left and right. So this way the level stays the same, but we can change when we place it. Or we could do the opposite. We could bring it up and down, but not side to side. Hold on the same modifiers, bring it up, and it constrains to up and down, but not side to side. And it works with multiple points. So if we're happy with this change right here, but we want to move where it changes, just select them both, constrain them, and move them over to this note. What we'll do with these, move them over to here or here, or here, without changing the level. We could also reduce our points. If we go over here, we have this pattern, but it has a lot of points. If you want to change them one by one, it's kind of hard. So we could reduce them by selecting them and choosing reduce number of points. And from here, we could bring it down to just the amount of points we need. Maybe something like this. Then it becomes a lot easier to edit. Just go over here and edit it. Edit this one point. We're down over here. It's easier to edit with less points. So now let's check out the other automation modes. Let's rewrite this section in write mode. Switch it over here. Now we're ready to write volume automation. So now this is written and it switches back to trim mode based on a preference. So now we can hear it back without it being recorded. But let's say we wanted to punch in just for a certain section. We can punch in automation using touch mode. Choose this over here. Switch it to touch mode, which we could also do by right clicking and choosing it here. So now it's going to happen. Automation is going to play back until we grab our fader, either here or over here. Then it's going to record until we let go. Then it's going to go back to whatever's recorded here. So let's do that. I'm going to grab it after it starts playing back and then let go. Thank you. 
So I let go over here, and I punched in or grabbed the fader right over here. So we rewrote this envelope by punching in using touch mode. So we play it back. Here's the old automation over here, and here's the new automation. Now we could also use latch mode. Let's right click over here and switch it to latch mode. Latch mode is very similar to touch mode, as it doesn't start recording until you grab the fader. But the difference is, if you let go of the fader, it doesn't punch out, which makes a lot of sense if you want to re-automate the rest of the song. So let's undo this, and we're going to punch in right about here, and if I let go of the fader, it's going to still keep recording. So I let go of my fader right over here, and it continued to record, which like I said, makes sense if you just want to punch in when you grab over here, but you don't want to punch out when you let go. And when you in latch or touch, as long as you don't touch anything, it's going to play back. Or touch mode. So it's different than write mode, as you can leave it on all the time. Just don't touch the faders unless you want to record automation. So those are the different automation modes in Reaper. Now if we go back to trim mode, as I mentioned earlier, the fader at this point, which is at zero, is just going to trim what happens over here. It's not going to record any more automation, but you are going to hear what's being trimmed. But we can also adjust the envelope. If we go over here and move it up and down, it readjusts our envelope, which is kind of the same thing, as we can make it louder by adjusting the envelope or by adjusting the fader. But it's just doing it in different ways. Now, going back to the automation modes, right now we're adjusting the mode on a track by track basis, but we don't have to do that. We can go down over here and adjust them globally. Right now, there's no global override, but we can change it. We could put them all into write, and then all the tracks are in write mode. Or we could switch them to latch, or touch, or back to trim. Or taking it out of global mode and letting each track be separate. Now we could also bypass all the envelopes from here. So if we have a lot of automation going on and you want to turn it off, just bypass them all here and they're all bypassed. And we could turn it back on from here. And now they're all playing. We can also show all the envelopes from this menu. Hit this, they're all hidden. Hit it again, and they're all shown. Now, besides the envelopes having their own lane down over here, let's make some more for pan and mute. We can put these envelopes in our media lane. Just right click over here and choose Show All Visible Track Envelopes in Media Lane. If we choose this, it shows up over here. And we can still edit it in here. Move our points around, delete points, create new ones, all in the same lane as our media item. Or we can move them back right over here. Show all visible track envelopes in envelope lanes. And now they all get their own lane. And we could switch them individually. Go to our volume, move it to the media lane. Now the volume's up here, but the pan and mute have their own lane. Move this one up, and this one. Now let's delete them all again. And instead of doing it from over here, we could just right click the envelope and clear it here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 
we can have envelopes that are based on items or based on takes. So we could select this, right click it, go to take, and go down over here to take envelopes. We could have one for volume, for pan, for mute, and even for pitch. We can also add them by double clicking, opening up our properties, and going over here to take envelopes. This opens up this dialog where we can add them as well. Let's make a pitch one. And now right over here, we have a pitch envelope for this item. Now it's not to be confused with the track envelopes. This is just gonna work for this item. So each item can have their own separate envelopes. So let's change the pitch of this note right here. Let's make it two semitones lower. We'll make four points, bring it down, two semitones, and it sounds like this. Or we could bring it up, two semitones. And again, we can do the same thing with volume, pan, or mute. Let's delete this one. And let's add one for volume. Now what I like about the volume envelope, based on the item or the take, is it's pre-effects. So if we're hitting a compressor or any dynamic plugin and it's hitting too hard, we can reduce it here before it even hits that compressor. Let me give an example. Let's say we want to change this note. Let's make four points and bring it up so the volume's a bit louder to match this one. We'll do the same thing for this note and try to make them more even before they hit the compressor. It's a bit too loud. But we can even out note by note. Or if the note's hitting too hard in the beginning, we can fade it in. Make some here and bring it down so it fades in the beginning of that note. See how it gets softer? And we can adjust it to taste. Before, it might hit too hard. And after, it's a bit smoother. So it's great for doing things like that, as the adjustments are pre-effects. Now, as I mentioned with track grouping, VCAs and even grouping are going to handle envelopes differently. Let me show you. Let's make a new track. And this track is going to be our master. So let's open grouping and make this our master. And let's select these tracks and make them our slave. Now, this is traditional track grouping. Now, VCAs, I'll show you that in a bit. So now if we move our fader right here, all the tracks move together. But if we draw an envelope on this track, right here, it's not gonna follow it. This track will, if we put it in read, but it doesn't affect these tracks because the envelope on the master doesn't change the slaves. Just moving this fader does. So the way to get around that, let's clear this, is to automate all the tracks together. So let's add a volume one to the master again. Now there's a shortcut for this. Just hit V for volume or P for pan. And that creates them or shows them a lot quicker. So we hit V, that opens it up. And now it's changed the automation mode for our master. If we put it into write, notice all the slaves go into write as well. So now if we write automation on this track, even though the envelope is on the master track, it also gets recorded to the slaves. So we don't really need this track anymore. We could delete it 
And we still have the automation that we just recorded because it was recorded on the individual tracks. So it's still there. So that's important to realize. Now, VCAs, it's a bit different. Let's undo all that. And let's take these out of their group. And instead, let's make this first one a VCA master. And then we'll take these and make them VCA slaves. So now this track is still controlling the volume, but it's not going to move the faders. Watch. Because VCAs don't actually move the fader, they control extra volume levels on each individual track. So if we record automation to this track, we're still going to hear it. Let's go into write. And notice the slave tracks aren't in write mode because they don't need to be. It's separate. So let's record some automation on the VCA master. And again, we hear it. But the automation is not on the individual tracks. But we can move it there. If we go to our actions and type in VCA, there's two actions here dealing with VCAs. This one is going to apply the envelope to the slave tracks. So we choose this, double click this one, and the automation moved from this track to the slaves. Make this a bit smaller so we could see it. Before, the automation was over here. But after, the automation moved to the slave tracks. And this is a very powerful feature. Let me show you why. It allows us to create trim automation, which before Reaper 5 didn't exist. You could trim the automation by moving a fader, but you couldn't rewrite the automation and combine it with the old one. But with VCAs, you can. So let's undo all this. And let me show you how it could be used. Let's delete this one. And let's take these out of that group. And let's make a new track. We'll put it up here. Give it a volume envelope. And let's make this a VCA master and this a VCA slave. VCA master, VCA slave. So now if we write automation on the master, we can move it to the slave. So let's do that. Go to write mode, and let's write some. Now let's move it to the slave track. Select it, go to actions, choose this one, and it moves it to the slave. So now we can trim that automation with another pass. Put this in write mode, and it's going to record a new envelope. So now these two envelopes have been combined. Play it back. We're hearing both of them, and we can mix them by doing that again. Choose it, go to the action. Choose this one again, and it applied this down here. It didn't replace it. Check out the before. This is what we're applying to this. Redo it, and it added the two together. So we created trim automation. We could do it again as many times as we want. Hit the same action. And it applies it to this envelope. So we're constantly adding to the original envelope. So it's basically trim automation in Reaper. So anyway, those are the envelopes and automation in Reaper. Let's move on.